Welcome back, friends, and thank you for joining me today. What do you think about this beautiful kitchen? Our friend Mel invited us here at Bottega, a farm in Colonna, and I thought this is the perfect occasion to take you on a culinary journey that is going to start from Greece and is going to take us all the way down to the Middle East. What we're preparing today is a messy feast. Let's get cooking. So what we were preparing today is a calamara olive tapenade from Greece, a fatouche salad, and a beautiful Jerusalem hummus. So we're gonna start with our calamara olive tapenade, and the ingredients are quite simple. What we're gonna need is a white onion, some calamara olives, some prunes, a little bit of fresh garlic, and of course, olive oil. So to start the tapenade, it's a very simple process. I'm going to chop up my onion. Uh, it's going to be puree at one point, so you don't have to worry about cutting it way too small. Uh, all uniform pieces, so that they're going to cook, they will cook at the same time. I'll never forget how I learned this dish, and it's actually from an old Greek man. His name is Spiro. And he taught me, when he taught me how to make it, he was a dishwasher in the restaurant. And I think that's what I really love about cooking, is that I've learned something from every person that I've met and every person that I cook with. We're gonna put the onions on very low heat, allow them to caramelize slowly. Like we've seen before, we don't want too much color. We're gonna add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, And I have some beautiful garlic that I'm just gonna crush lightly. And you wanna leave it nice and chunky, so it's sort of gonna roast. So I have about three, three cloves. It's sort of, the garlic is sort of gonna roast and get that sweet, beautiful caramelized flavor that's gonna perfectly go with the onions, the saltiness of the olives, and it's gonna, there's, the prunes are gonna add a little bit of sweetness and it's gonna make this beautiful dip that can go with absolutely anything. As our tapenade is cooking, we're gonna get something else going, our fatouche salad. Here are the ingredients for it. I have some pita bread. Traditionally, if it was uh, a day old even, a little bit stale, that's what we use. A little bit of garlic, a variety of vegetables that you have kicking around your kitchen. Definitely at this time of the year, it's still summertime, even though if it's getting a little colder. So we have tomatoes, red onions, a pepper, a little bit of lettuce. You can use cucumber, we actually have cucumber and um, or really anything fresh that you have coming from your garden or, or from, from the market. Fatouche is really uh, traditionally um, a bread salad and it's, uh, it was designed to use uh, the leftovers bread that you had from the day before. Uh, and in fact has just chunks of pitas and you can kind of cut them you know, just in, in pieces. They don't have to be, uh, they don't have to have a, a particular shape. And I'm gonna throw them in a frying pan. I just add a little bit of olive oil to my frying pan. And I'm just gonna let them toast up nicely on a medium low heat. You wanna try to keep an eye on it because it is bread and it might, uh, it might burn quite easily. So make sure they're all covered in a nice amount of olive oil. A little bit of salt. And now we're gonna put as the pitas is cooking, we're going to put our, our salad together. And this doesn't get any easier. Take a few leaves of this beautiful butter lettuce. Those vegetables, they're so crunchy still. They're coming from a, a little church a organic farm here in Colonna. And that, of course, is, always makes an amazing difference in uh, in your final product, if the quality of the ingredients is there. And you can just tell from the colors that we're working with some beautiful ingredients. This salad is supposed to be chunky, it's very rustic. So don't worry too much about how you're cutting ingredients, you know. Certain ingredients are a little bit stronger than others. So I might cut my onion a little bit smaller so that you don't get a big chunk.
I have this beautiful filled tomato. And you can just tell how much flavor and color is going to add to my dish. Nice, beautiful chunks. Make sure you keep an eye on your, on your uh, pitas that are toasting up. So they're going to take on, on low heat, they're going to take maybe five, six minutes. And as you can tell, those are our onions for the calamara olive tapenade. You just want to slowly cook them. So if you, you start getting any color, you want to turn the heat down and allow it to, to uh, cook in slowly for as long as possible. Back to our fatouche. We have a little bit of cucumber. Just give it a quick chop. And what I really love about this salad is how fragrant the flavor is, how rustic it is, and how simple it is. I have a whole bunch of uh, parsley, and you can just break it up with your hands. Parsley is a beautiful herb, highly underrated, I find, but it's got an amazing flavor and lots of also really good properties. This is a little bit of fresh basil. And what else do we hear? A little bit of mint. Mint is going to add that touch of freshness to your dish. So we have uh, all the fresh herbs, cilantro, fresh basil, a little bit of mint. I'm going to add a little bit of crumbled feta. Just a touch of raw garlic. So the garlic is going to be raw. You want to chop it really small. It's going to add that spiciness, that little extra, the little extra flavor. But you don't want it to overpower uh, the whole dish because it can be overpowering. So this is starting to look really nice, really colorful. All we have to do is really is dress it. So I'm going to add a bit of salt, fresh pepper, and I love salad that uh, um, requires really no dressing. What I have here is fresh lemon, a nice generous squeeze, and olive oil. I take my, my pita bread, it's still slightly warm. I'm going to add it right in there. So now there is going to be different juices coming out from the tomatoes and the cucumber. The crispy bread is going to suck in all these juices and it's going to become pure deliciousness in a bowl. And you can tell how beautiful and colorful this is going to be. We're going to go back to our calamara olive tapenade. So the onions have been cooking for about, uh, I'd say about 10 minutes now. And you can tell they're starting to have a little bit of color, they're going translucent. It means they're ready for the next stage. I'm going to add my olives right in it. And I have these beautiful prunes. And I'm just going to chop them up roughly, maybe. Just uh, in force. And prunes are the magic ingredient in this dish. Because they're going to add that sweetness. This is going to bridge the flavor between the olives, the saltiness of the olives, and everything else. And they're going to create a perfect balance that is going to be quite uh, surprising in your mouth, but very exciting. And I'm, I have a little bit of basil here. And as you probably know by now, basil is always a good idea in a dish. So the basil goes in. I'm just going to let it cook for just 30 seconds or so. Just let all the flavors mingle and, and start parting together. And we're going to move to our food processor and just puree, puree uh, the tapenade up. So I'm going to add just a splash of olive oil to add, add the, the blending process. And now at this point, it's up to you. If you like it really smooth or if you're using it for a sandwich or spreading it on the pita, then you can blend it quite fine. But if you like it a little bit of chunky, then just be careful and pulse it for a couple of times. I personally like it when it's still slightly chunky, so you kind of are able to recognize the different flavors. You know, once in a while there'll be a little bit more onions, 
one thing, one thing why the prunes comes in. A little garnish, beautiful, dark, sexy color. You, it has many, many uh, uses in your kitchen. It can be the sauce for your sandwich, it can be the base for your pizza, and it can be just a nice spread to eat with bread when your friends first come to your house and you just want to entertain them and not having to do much in the kitchen. Calamaro with tapenade. It's now time to prepare our hummus, the final dip for our mezze feast. Hummus, you probably have tried it before. Uh, we're going to do a Jerusalem uh, style hummus. The little, there's a very small difference from classic hummus, uh, it's made with parsley. Uh, it should be creamy, it should be lemony, it should be tangy. So it's very versatile and also lots of flavor. Let's have a quick look at the ingredients again. We have fresh lemons, taimini paste, ground sesame, chickpeas, olive oil, and uh, cumin seeds. And this is, the whole process is very, very simple. And uh, I, I can't say I have a recipe for this dish because it's all about your own personal taste. So it has to be, has to have a certain balance between, and actually I forgot to tell you, we're of course gonna put garlic in it. But you need to have a certain balance that uh, you will find out once you make it. You want a little bit more garlic, then you're gonna need to add a bit more garlic. A little bit more lemon, you're gonna need to add a bit more lemon. So we're gonna start with about a cup, a cup or two of chickpeas. We're gonna squeeze a lemon, a whole lemon, so it's gonna take quite a bit of lemon. I'm gonna add a generous amount of cumin. And for about two cups, I would say at least one, a generous tablespoon. Tahini paste is quite, quite uh, strong in flavor. You probably wouldn't eat it just like that, but it adds, uh, it creates a background where the chickpeas and the lemon and the garlic will stand on. So it's a very important ingredient. And you can buy, uh, you know, it lasts for quite a long time because you do use quite, quite little, about uh, a tablespoon or so. There we go. And we're gonna add a little bit of garlic. I have about one good clove. Garlic is one of those ingredients you wanna be careful how much you add because it might become very pungent and very strong. Olive oil, a nice pinch of salt, fresh pepper. So we're gonna blend it. And you might need just a little bit of water to help the, the, proce the process going through. It also depends how smooth you like it. We're gonna see how it tastes. So it's got a nice base flavor, but I want more flavor. So lemon, of course, as always, it just makes things come to life. So don't be shy with the lemon. And also remember, once the hummus goes in the fridge, the flavor, because the temperature is gonna be colder, the flavor is gonna be dull out. They're gonna dull out a little bit. So what you wanna do, you're gonna make sure that this is bursting with flavor. A little bit more lemon. The garlic I can taste is just, just perfect. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt and a little bit more cumin. So at this point, you're gonna be playing yourself with it. You're gonna find that balance that is gonna satisfy you. Remember, the lemon brings out the flavor. The cumin is gonna add roundness and that, the texture to, uh, to your hummus. And the garlic, you can add as much as you like if you love garlic. Uh, you can be, be very playful with hummus. You can add uh, roasted peppers to it. You can make it with a different bean. The possibilities are literally unlimited. One last ingredient to make this a true Jerusalem hummus, and it's this beautiful curly parsley. You don't wanna confuse it with Italian parsley, we're using curly parsley. And you can just grab a nice, nice handful. 
Uh, parsley also really helps. Uh, the flavors of the, our mezze feast are quite strong, so there is raw garlic, lemon. The parsley will help to keep the palate really clean so that you are able to keep on tasting all these beautiful flavors. A quick buzz. Every time I eat hummus, it makes me smile. It's just something happens in your mouth, you know, the, the, whole, the whole tongue, the whole palate is just excited and happy to taste a really well-made hummus. So here is our Jerusalem uh, hummus. I'm gonna add a splash of olive oil. Here it is, our mezze feast. Lots of colors, lots of flavors, but are we really ready to start our, our feast? I think there is one missing ingredient, and that's gonna be falafel. And for that, I need you to be patient and wait till next episode.